Good morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to our Sunday morning worship service where Jesus Christ is Lord. We do appreciate all the happy, smiling faces that are here today on this wonderful, wonderful morning to worship our Lord and Savior. If you would at this time, if you all would just join us and stand as we have the call to worship. Thank you so very much. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. The presence of God is the joy of the earth. Let the children of Judah rejoice. God will be in our God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. Here we go. Yeah. 
You may be seated. Welcome to Satellite Beach United Methodist Church. Amen. Amen. I'm a first time person here. And as far as I'm concerned, all of you are first time people here as well. Because you're new to me. So please sign in on the attendance sheet pads and pass them down the pews and make sure you sign in and let everybody know that you're here so that we can keep connecting with one another in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Um, we are so excited that today has come. Uh, my family and I, this is uh, just for introduction's sake, uh, my wife Terry, and then my daughter uh, Adriel, uh, Eliana, and then uh, skip one, and that's uh, Jaden. Um, even though these two are kind of adopted, because uh, they're over at my house all the time. So this is kind of my family in the first pew. So automatically we've raised the attendance uh, here at uh, Satellite Beach by at least 5%. So you're welcome. Uh, but we're here, of course, to celebrate the Lord Jesus and on a communion Sunday in which we uh, are reminded of our need for the nourishment of God's love and grace in our lives. And uh, lots of things are going on, and lots of things um, have gone on. We, we've experienced a long transition time, and you know that uh, it's been a difficult time to say goodbye to someone so beloved as Pastor Harry. So we recognize that that has been um, an incredible feat on, on your behalf. And uh, Pastor Harry and the team here has been so gracious um, that we've been very moved and touched by their welcome here and their love and the love of all of you. So um, uh, I would like for us to give the Lord an applause for the spirit of hospitality that this church has already shown us through the leadership and through the people here. So I just want to say thank you. And so let's um, go ahead and... Uh, remind you that uh, our prayer focus today is our nation, and I hope you all had a safe and wonderful 4th of July. And um, the VBS is July 22nd through the 26th, and we need volunteers. Uh, it, that almost never happens, right, that we need volunteers. I've never heard that before. Uh, so some things, no matter what church you're at, remains the same but I'm sure that we are going to fill those volunteer spots uh, soon, right? Amen. We're going to claim it, right, in Jesus' name. And uh, the next movie night is on the lawn, and that will take place on Saturday, July 13th. And I'm excited about those movies on the lawn. I love that. That's great. Um, we can, do we have popcorn? Yeah? Okay. Popcorn is essential. And then Christmas in July, our ministry of sharing the blessings of the Lord with our local schools like Ocean Breeze, Surfside, Holland Elementary, Sea Park, Delora, and Satellite High School. I am just so uh, pumped up that we're going to be able to reach out to these uh, schools and to be a part of what's going on and what the Lord is doing in these schools. It's just exciting. Um, it's, I mean, it's an, an incredible uh, gift and honor, and we hope to join you on those ministries, of course. And I think that's all that's on my announcement sheet, which I appreciate uh, the printout there for all of us, to, uh, so I don't have to remember all of that. So um, um, I don't know about you, but I feel like praying, so uh, let's pray. Lord, we ask that you would guide us in our worship this morning and lead us in everything that we do. May you be glorified that you would help us to accomplish our vision and mission of changing and transforming lives with the power of Jesus' love. And so be with us today as we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and continue to worship the Lord together. Keep walking on. It's 
something up ahead, water falling like a song. An everlasting stream, your river carries me home. Let it flow, let it flow. A flood for my soul. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I found in the desert place, though I walked through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Be 
Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. This is our prayer, the Heavenly Father, to know that we have a friend in you. And without you, we have no one else to lean on. We have earthly friends, we have family, but there's none that sticks closer than you. And we just want to thank you for your love and mercy and grace toward us. We want to thank you for being our friend because if we have no one else to go to, we know that you're there. So we want to take this time and say thank you Dear Heavenly Father, for allowing Jesus to come and sacrifice his life for us, giving us another opportunity again and again for eternal life. So as we stand here today, every soul that's represented, we ask that your love and mercy will shadow over our spirits. Make us one with you and in a purpose. We serve you because of that magnificent love that you share with us over and over. Make you a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. So at the end of this service, when we leave this place, Heavenly Father, we will realize that we're leaving with a friend. We thank you, and we ask that you hear and accept our prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray.
my way, tries to steal what you say. I have no reason to pray. I will give thanks. I will give thanks. When the roar that I hear is the voice of my fear, trying to silence this hope in my heart. I will give thanks. I will give thanks. Turn to a time of prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for all of your blessings today. Thank you for your presence with us, that without we would be nothing. We would just be here singing and uh, wasting the breath of our lungs for no purpose. But you are our purpose. You are our center. You give us life. Because the breath that we breathe is yours. Um, the, the love that we have, you've given to us. 
the ability to be here uh, before you in your holy presence is because of your son Jesus Christ who gave us the ability and because of his sacrifice and resurrection we can call you a father uh, we can call um, you friend Jesus even though you are Lord and so we come to you this morning with our prayers and with our praises we come lifting up the nation and all of its troubles and divisions and strife that you would bring unity and peace and wisdom to our leaders and that you would be lord with those who are um, been in the the path of hurricane burke and in the in the caribbean and jamaica and, and those places that it's hit uh, Lord, we pray for um, uh, Israel and Gaza and for peace there and for Ukraine and for peace there. We pray, Lord God, for our community as we transition and look to the future uh, in hopes, Lord God, that you would continue to guide us and uh, lead us, that you would give us vision and uh, the right uh, perspective and purpose that we would listen to your voice and uh, allow your spirit to fill us. And Lord, this morning we also pray for all the new pastors and new appointments. And um, they are uh, meeting new congregations and congregations are welcoming uh, new clergy to their family. And so we lift up those uh, situations that they would be good fits and um, that you would work in those uh, situations. Um, and we pray for those who retired, like Pastor Harry. And we lift up Pastor Harry and his uh, wife, and as they went to Alabama, that you would guide them and uh, continue to fill their life with purpose, uh, even uh, as they are uh, looking uh, to, to situate themselves in the retirement life, Lord God, that um, you always continue to call us uh, to serve you wherever we are and so that you would bless them and keep them in their new life there and so we lift up our time here as well uh, we lift up the family of um, Ruth Singletary uh, there is no scheduled uh, time of, of uh, service right now for her uh, but we lift up her family who continues to be in mourning and for those that are on our prayer list for Charlotte and Jean and Georgia and Renee for Grace for Carolyn for Ruth for Don Melissa Kimberly Barb and Pete you know their situation and you know our situation Lord so we lift up um, our unspoken prayers to you and now Lord God Fill us with your spirit as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's uh, children's church time, so I'll see, I'll see you guys later because I'm going to go hang out with the kids. <laughs> that's more my, my thing, but I think they're going that way, so I, that's, I'm supposing that's where they're supposed to be, so that's great. I love having children's church. That's awesome. And so we come to the time of our offertory, and... Um, this is something that is always uh, a subject that we need to be reminded of, that our, our tithes and our offerings are bound up with our spirituality because um, as we give and as we trust in the Lord, the Lord always uh, is promising us that he will be true and faithful to us. And of course, um, we know that we are all uh, God's children and everything that we are and have belongs to the Lord. So 
uh, this is an opportunity to rejoice and give back and to um, serve the kingdom of God in material and financial ways. And um, you all uh, I'm sure have heard that we do need some uh, help in that area. And uh, we, we just uh, bought a new parsonage. Thank you very much. It's a very incredible gift for us. Thank you for everyone who um, participated in that. And we're slowly moving in and we're painting the place and um, trying to get all of our stuff moved over. And then now we're trying to sell the old parsonage. And that takes a lot of maneuvering and trusting in God. So we want to be faithful to the Lord with what he's given us. So um, have the ushers come forward and let's pray for our offering. Lord, receive thou now these gifts as a token of our appreciation, of our gratitude, that you've given us all that we need, more and abundantly and above and beyond all of what we can think of. And Lord, when we struggle, Lord God, to trust in you with our lives and our finances and in our service, that we would realize that uh, the bountiful blessings of giving to you and to your kingdom always return tenfold to us because you are a good God. And so bless these tithes and offerings that we're about to give. May they go forth to bless your kingdom and use them according to your will, wherever you believe they belong. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
What's love got to do with it? That really is the question that many of us ask. It's the question that society continually in the background always, always places upon all kinds of situations. What does love got to do with it? And of course, have you ever asked yourself what it is? Of course, Tina Turner is expressing this societal feeling that it um, is something that you need to, um, well, protect yourself from. What's love got to do with it? It's a second-hand emotion. Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Diminishing the issue of love in order to free yourself so that you can do what you want to do, act in the way that you want to act, detaching your actions and uh, who you are uh, from this very important issue of vulnerability and true relationships. The it really is about everything. Why? Because we love, and love is at the central core of what it means to be human. Love calls us to responsibility. Love gives us hope and purpose. Love is really what frees us. And the other part of this song is really saying, hey, what's love got to do with it? Because if you, if you have to deal with love, then you're bound. You're kind of limited. We want to be free from love. We want to be free from the consequences of getting involved in relationships. We want to be free from the consequences of getting hurt. We don't want to have the burden of dealing with emotional baggage. And so what's love got to do with it also has to do with freedom, with free will, with the choices that we make. And so it has to do with almost everything that we do. Because you and I might not uh, be thinking what's love got to do with it when we make a decision about our business or about our friendships or about whether we're going to forgive somebody or what, uh, what kind of things we're going to be doing. But it has to do with love because one way or another, the actions and things that we do will affect either harm or help others. If we are harming someone, for example, we can ignore um, the fact that uh, the business that we're engaging in hurts someone across the world because we're promoting slave or child labor. Or we ignore the fact that uh, there is um, a people who are being oppressed and we're uh, benefiting ourselves from that business or even the not wanting to forgive someone when that person is trying to reconcile with us that is and is all about love and it's about our free choice to not love and you see love and freedom love and our free will are bound together because to truly love, you must be truly free. So we can ask this question two other ways. What's freedom got to do with it? What does freedom have to do with love? What does love have to do with freedom? And that's what the text this morning of Galatians 5 is going to address. We're going to read verses 1 and then verses 13 through 18. But I advise you to read the whole chapter. Galatians 5, 1, 13 through 18. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. 
For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love become enslaved to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit. I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Let us pray. Lord, give us insight to your word. Speak to our hearts. May we be conformed and transformed by the renewing of our mind that we would be united with you in knowing what you want and allowing you to change us, to mold us into the image of Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Do you see how both of these things go together? It's clear here that for freedom Christ has set us free. It's not only that, but verse 13 says, you were called to freedom. You see, so what does love got to do with it? It's the same question as what does freedom got to do with it? What does freedom got to do with it? Because everything we do has to do with our free will, with your choice and my choice to either do what God wants us to do or ignore God's presence and God's guidance, to ignore the spirit of Jesus or to follow him. You see, it says, for freedom, that's an interesting phrase, for freedom Christ has set us free. For freedom Christ has set us free. What is this freedom that Christ has set us free for? Well, it's the freedom of being able to have our free will reinstated by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ on the cross that he died and rose again so that you and I could really be able to have our free will intact. We were created with the image of God within us. And you see, God is the free agent of free agents. God is free. We know that God is love, but you see, for God to be able to be love, God must be completely and perfectly free. There is no love without a complete and perfect free will. And it's the same for you and me. But God loves perfectly. God is good. God has chosen to share himself with us. And, and he chose Abraham. He chose to share the, the, the law with the, the Israelites. He chose the people of Israel to represent him. And they were called holy. They were set apart because God chose them in love. Now, they believed, as Galatians goes to say, previous to this chapter, that the law was meant for them to be able to like, make deals with God. That at this point in time, they were thinking that, well, things haven't gone well. What we need to do is continue to make deals using the law, kind of like a magical incantation. If we do what we're supposed to do, then God has to do what we want him to do. He must act and behave in the way that we expect him to behave. Not unlike what you and I sometimes think about God in today's world. You and I sometimes, even though we're Christian, but the popular idea about God is that we can say a prayer and that God will automatically have to be beholding to us. Or if we do this and we're good for so, this amount of time, God must respond. But you see, God doesn't respond to us because we are good. God responds to us because he loves us. And because he has a plan for us. 
And that even though we might be misguided and a little bit off, even though we fail uh, and fall, even though we make all these promises and, and we have lots and lots and lots of times when we say, God, I'll be uh, your follower, I'll, I'll do what you want me to do, and we still fail, God still searches us, seeks us out, never leaves us or forsakes us. And then, see, Jesus came to say, yes, God shared his will and his way with us, but now I'm going to show you that God is a free will agent, but is also love. And so here we are reminded that what does love mean? have to do with it. Love has to do with everything because everything has to do with our free will. And our free will, you and I, even now, have a choice. Do not use our freedom to be submitted again to slavery. Do not use your freedom for self-indulging. Do not use your freedom to gratify the desires of the flesh. This is the very point of the song. What's love got to do with it? Eh, we don't want love to have anything to do with it. Because we want to be able to do what we want and not suffer the consequences. And um, we don't want to have the pain, right? Who needs a heart when the heart can be broken? We want to disassociate our bodies from who we are in our souls, but in God's way of making us and in God's economy of life, we are really bonded together as body and soul. True freedom is true love. And true love truly frees. I did a wedding last night for some folks, and this is something I tried to share with them, that when you sacrifice yourself for someone else, and you try to lay down your life so that another person can live, that this is part of the hardship and the calling of love, but that in and of itself frees you, frees you to understand that your life is not your own. And there is a precious gift there. As Jesus shared with us on the cross, through loving and serving one another, we are set free. We are no longer having to um, keep to uh, the materialism of the world. We don't have to be slaves to our sin. We don't have to uh, continually uh, kind of impress other people and impress God because God is the one who assures us that we matter and that we have eternal value because he eternally loves us. So therefore, what are we to do with our lives? What are we to do with our bodies? What are we to do with our thoughts and our actions? How are we to treat one another? It is that everything has to do with our free will and our love. Because you see, love and free will are two sides of the same coin. And you say, well, how can we do this? It's impossible. This is just not fair. We're being asked to do the impossible. Well, no, Galatians here reminds us. Paul says, no, the, the Spirit of God is in you. Live by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. This is how you overcome the world, with Christ living in you. Let the Spirit empower you. And so the Spirit empowers us to choose to love. And the more we choose the Spirit's way of loving the more we are set free from our slavery to sin and the more we become who God wants us to become. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject by the law. What the Spirit desires is opposite to the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, listen to this, to prevent you from doing what you want. Oh, but doing what I want is freedom. Freedom. But that's the thing. Doing what you want seems like freedom, but it isn't. You're using your freedom to do what you want. But when you do what you want, you end up in a place that is destructive and detrimental to you, detrimental to others, 
because you and I don't know what God knows. God knows that we need God, that we need each other, that true life, true hope and peace, true living, true freedom comes as we submit ourselves to Jesus, letting him be the Lord and guide of our life. And this is what the table is about. This is what communion is about. This is why in our tradition, the table of communion is open to everyone and it is a free gift for everyone who seeks and desires to know the truth. That it is especially for those who do not know Jesus because here you can know that there is a special calling in your life and we believe that God's grace especially is activated when we come and do this very simple and what seems like menial task of eating a little piece of bread and, and, and dipping it in a little bit of juice. But you see, because Jesus told us, do this in remembrance of me, and I will be with you, that this is my body, and this is my blood. This is um, the sacrifice I made so that you could be free. This is the cup of the new covenant of love and of hope and of empowerment so that you could live with the same joy, with the same um, um, gifts, and with the same calling as I, that I will live in you. That you can be one with each other through this table as I am one with the Father. So let us come now to the table of unity, the table of freedom, the table of love, the table of forgiveness. So let us um, bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we lift up our lives to you now. Uh, for whatever reason, we're here, that you would be um, uh, with these elements, that you would make them uh, the body and the blood of Christ for us. Um, that in this moment, when we come and take these elements, um, they would be what we need, that you would answer our prayer, even if we don't know what we're asking, and touch our lives so that we could take one step closer in making you our Lord and our Savior. So we thank you for your peace and your joy and your unity and your invitation to all of us. And so, Lord, may we freely choose you today and freely be in your love and in your will because you are awesome and you are to be praised and glorified. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite the prayer, t uh, the praise team and the um, AV folks to come forward for communion first.
the blood that Jesus shed for Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Come and receive the love and freedom that Christ wants for you. Come for all are welcome. need us to come to you. <clears throat> Does anybody need us to come to them? song.
The Lord knows your struggles. The Lord knows your desires. The Lord knows what you fear and what you love. And he is with you in all of those situations because he is working all things for good in your life. Go and allow that assurance to free you to live, to serve, and to give, and to hope for all that God has for you, that they will be for your good in the Lord's will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.